Well, hello again out there, YouTube. My name's Greg. This is Greg's Mowers Mower. It's your first time, uh, first time joining us here on the channel. We like to take uh, vintage lawn and garden equipment and try and see if we can't get it going again. Um, our goal is to use as many of the original parts and pieces as we can. Most of the time, we're successful. Um, also, I like to try to spread the word of Jesus. Um, my Lord and Savior died on the cross for my sins and yours. And, uh, you know, all you're going to do is ask him to come into your heart forgive your sins and be Lord of your life and he can help you walk through pretty much anything so glad we got that out of the way um, there'll be a Bible verse at the end of this this uh, video for you I put a Bible verse at the end of all my full length videos sometimes the shorts don't have it, but the full length video as well anyway thank you for uh, thank you for choosing to watch one of my videos I really appreciate it and uh, let's dig in today we're gonna be working on this snapper high back um, vintage 1980s I saw this thing on the marketplace a while back. It's probably been sitting here, oh gosh, probably been sitting here for about six months now, maybe a year. And it hasn't ran in God knows how long. But uh, we're going to get started on it. So I think the first thing I'll do is I'll pick you guys up and give you a flyover. Let you guys drink this thing in. Check out that uh, sweet snapper logo right there on the front. Yep. We got the old uh, sideways Briggs and Stratton. Snapper high vac. We got our throttle and our self propel controls. So, I mean, the old bags kind of seen better days. So, what year is this thing? Where is the thing at on there? 1982 by the uh, thing over there. Wheels look to be in pretty good shape, deck looks to be in real good shape. Got lots of spider webbage and eggs and still got the uh, safety decal there. We got our plastic side chute. The side still looks pretty good. Anyway, we got a hole in our bag right there where the chute comes out, so that's not good, but it is what it is. All right, let me throw you guys back up on the tripod and we'll dig in some more. So let's go ahead and uh... Go through our fluids first, make sure there's engine oil in it. Oh, this is a three and a half horse, not the four horse. Some of them used to have a four horse on them. Well, we got some oil in there. It looks pretty nice and clean. It does smell a bit fuely. What about fuel? Fuel cap's kind of stuck on there. Is there anything in there? Yeah, there's a little bit in there. Not good. All right. Does it spin over? Yes. Spins. Heard a little compression noise there, so that's a good sign. It's not like that Jacobson was. And this is all, you know, busted the rod. Let's take a peek at this air cleaner here. Oh, it's still pliable, so that's a good sign. Real good sign. Carb spring seems to be intact. Okay. Let's uh, maybe try and get some of that fuel out of there. Take a look at it and see what it looks like. What do you say? Little siphon guy out here. Let's see if we can't pull some fuel out. There may not be enough left in there to pull. Yeah, I don't know. Not looking too good for pulling fuel out of there. All right, let's move on. Sad thing is, I know these old snappers aren't worth a whole lot of money. I mean, I guess if you paint them up, they, they might be, but otherwise, like this one here, it's probably not even worth what I paid for it, but that's okay. It was a neat purchase. Sometimes you just got to go with your gut and buy something and could be the greatest thing you ever had in your life. I don't know. Don't know until you try. I'm going to uh, pull that plug out next. We're going to take a look at that. See what it tells us. going to lube the cylinder. Like I said, you don't know how long this thing's been sitting. So let's go ahead and do that. Plug wire doesn't look the greatest either. Boots all tore up. There we go. I 
how you guys doing out there today in uh, YouTube land? Doing pretty good? Ooh. Ooh. No. It's looking kind of dark there. Hopefully you guys can see that, but that's got me thinking maybe she's an oil burner. Yeah, this boot's pretty well done for it. I'm just going to take him off of there for right now. Stick this back on the plug. Shift this up to the choke start. Oh, we need to lube it first. Duh. A little bit of that BB in there. Spark, shall we? I don't know how I'm going to do that though. This will go something like that, maybe. No spark. So that means the top of this thing is going to have to come off. We have to get the blower shield off of here. So that should be a 5 16 for that cable, 7 16 here. Should be a 7 16 here. This one's a 7 16 or a half. Get some tools together. Some of this is probably going to be pretty fun. This big plastic, big plastic guy right in the way here. Let's see here. buy one of these cheap Walmart hyper tough drills. They're just not great. The 7 16 back here, hiding behind the recoil. That's the half still. Sorry, guys. stick this back in the cover where it came out of just so I know. you got to pull this dipstick tube out to be able to get to the back cover bolt which is kind of dumb but it is what it is still better than working on it to come any day sorry if you like to come you must like stuff that's hard I like stuff to be easy to work on.
But yeah, I figured I'd uh, throw the snapper video out there because you guys are probably getting kind of irritated with me since it's been a lawn boy for a while now. So we'll get on the snapper that I've had sitting around forever and been meaning to get to. Then after that, we'll go back on the lawn boys for a while. So I gotta get all this stuff out of here. There's just too much stuff in here and I gotta tear this shed down at some point. So, gotta get it down and get it gone. On to the next thing. Which reminds me, I guess I should probably tell you guys now that once I get everything out of here and start tearing this shed down, there might be a period of time when I gotta step away for a little bit and not put up videos for a while. Unless you guys think you might like to see me do some videos on tearing down this big old shed, then maybe I'll include that on the channel. Although I really don't know much about that kind of thing. Um, but anyway, leave me some comments. Let me know what you guys think. Always happy to do things for my subscribers. All right. Well, there we go. Got our cover off. Now we're going to have some quarter inch screws here for the cover plate over the flywheel there, the thing that keeps the grass and debris out of it. Oh, geez. Okay, that was crazy. There we go. One, two, oh jeez, man, come on, come on there, booger, three, there's my PB back there, come here you, let's coat this thing down because it's pretty grody looking. Get out our old Milwaukee. Yep, should be that size right there, and it is. There we go. We got that one on there. Okay, set them right there. our OSHA approved ball peen today. Trying to get this off of here. You can see this guy here has got a little end cap on it so you really don't have to put a socket over it. There's no starter clutch on it. So you can just kind of take your pry bar, put it down there, and give her a nice little tap. Ooh. Ooh. There she goes. Took me three. I'm getting old and weak and feeble. It's crazy. All right, so she come off of there. Flywheel keys right there, in good shape. Nice aluminum key. Set it, uh, set it over here. Let's check her flywheel. Make sure she's still magnetic. Yep. Oh yeah, she's magnetic. She needs cleaned up some. Anyway, we're down to our points cover. We got two screws. One, two. Back them out. see if this is the if this thing's ever been off before. Feels like she's stuck on there pretty good. Might be the original points cover. Yep, see it's got that sticky stuff back here. It's never been off. There we go. Got her off of there. Alright. Now I'm probably going to have to move you guys so you can kind of see what's going on here. All right, I got you guys on a little bit better tripod location there. Got you zoomed in, so hopefully you can see what's going on here. So here's our condenser right here. Here's our breaker points. It's kind of hard to see because it's kind of dark out here and my treble light failed, so I don't have anything to get you in here to see real good. But, um, I got plenty of other videos out there. Right here, this arm moves when the engine's rotated around. And it should open and close, and the point should touch. 
Let me see if I can get my hand under there. No, I can't rotate this thing. Let's see about getting that going there. Yeah, there they go. There they just closed. They're corroded as all get out though. Looking pretty bad. So this is an ignition points file. You can get one at your local hardware store, most places around here, probably bought them all. We're gonna get that in between the points and sandy sand away on them. And it helps if you put a little pressure on them or remove more material faster. Can also give them a little flick every now and again. Boy, they're about shot. They're flaking off, man. And I don't have a set of points. I probably got a magnetron coil. I really want to go that route. Not yet. Let's see if we can't salvage the old points for now. Flicky. Oof, man, that one badly corroded. One on the condenser side is just really, really badly corroded. It's bad. Now you gotta be careful with this because this thing is on spring here. If you mess it up, it'll fly right out at you. You'll have a lot of fun getting it back in there. All right, let's spray those off. Bump them up a little bit. No. So, that should have taken care of that. Now we can uh, go ahead and put our flywheel and stuff back on there. We can check it and see if we got spark. Spin it over with the drill before we slap everything back on it. That way we'll know we're good. Yeah, I'm trying to get uh, trying to get some stuff kicked out right now because the weather's nice. It's supposed to be like 100 degrees. It's like 100 degrees, 100 degrees most of this week here, in Central Illinois. It's gonna be not so awesome. I mean, if you're uh, down south in Texas or one of those places, I hear it's just absolute an absolute scorcher down there right now. Go ahead and sand the magnets. Yeah, I'm a little concerned for my chickens with the heat coming, you know. Just gonna have to throw some ice cubes out there. Get them some stuff. It's gonna be crazy. Crazy heat. Let's get some of this rust knocked off of here. I need to clean up that this coil post a little bit too, but I need some card cleaner for that, I think, because they're just covered in gut. Probably ought to give a little bit now the carburetor too while we're here. Maybe that'll do something, I don't know. Yeah, I always try to clean up every single contact that I can on these things, whether they need it or not. Alrighty, this looks to be better. So, let's get our flywheel key. Let's see if I can get this thing spun around at all. Maybe not. 
slider flywheel key back down to slot. Sometimes, Mom always said there'd be days like these. That's an expression. My mom didn't actually say that, but it's not that I remember. What's the deal here, Turkey? What's the deal? I guess you could always try it this way. Drop your flywheel down on there, but it's trying to stick to the coil. I like that. I like trying it that way. We need to get this crankshaft rotated around before we need. It. They're out of the way there a little bit. There we go. Now put the key in. Line up the flywheel. Bring it on down. Here we line it up. Well, you little devil. You're giving me a hard time, ain't you? You see, they dropped right on there. Don't want to. There we go. We got her that time. We got her that time, fellers. Let's snug that down. And give her a few ugga duggas here. I'm sure there's a torque spec for that, but I don't know. Time to wheel her over with the drill. See if we actually fix any of them. Well, let's see if we got any sparkles. Oh, geez. Okay, we're throwing oil out everywhere. I forgot about that dipstick tube not being in there. I just coated myself with gas, with oil. That's fantastic. Put that uh, dipstick tube slightly back in there. Wondered why it felt like it was raining. Not the sharpest tool in the shed, am I? Nope. Not. Nah. Okay. Well, there's that. Dipstick tube's back in it. So now we can uh, spin her over some more. Oh geez, and that sounds real good. Don't it? Yeah, we got no fire. None. No fire. Wonder why that is. So where's our little shutoff wire at? See under there still? Wonder. Take off a little bit, get a look under here. There's our little coil wires. Let's disconnect them. Where's our little push tab at, though? I don't know. That should have been the one going to the coil. Now that that's a note. Now let's see if we got any fire there now. Oh yeah, tons of fire. Nice hot blue spark. So our wire going to the coil is grounded out somewhere. Wonder why. Oh, look at all the stuff in the fins. Okay. We're going to have to blow all this out. Get in there. Tell you what, 
Let me uh, get all this cleaned out with my thing here and we'll come back. All right, so I just realized that I had you guys zoomed in on the points there. Didn't have you zoomed out like it is now where you probably see what I'm doing. Anyway, we weren't getting any spark after I cleaned points and I took the wire off that goes from here, your little ground out, your throttle grounds out, to the coil off and we had spark. Hooked it back up, didn't have spark again. So I unhooked this wire, which goes over there to some sort of a safety switch or a fail safe thing. Lo and behold, we have spark with it hooked up. So we're just gonna delete on that, whatever that's for, that wire over there. I'll remove that in a little bit. But at any rate, we should be good enough to uh, start slapping this thing back together. And I think for time's sake, I'm just gonna, uh, I don't know, I'll probably just fast forward through that or whatever, but I do wanna tape it so you guys can see it happen. So we're gonna go ahead and start that process. <laughs> Now most people would just go through the carburetor while it's off right now, and I probably should. But I'm just going to see if maybe we can't get lucky. Maybe somehow the carburetor on this old girl won't be all gummed up. But I don't know. We'll find out. Did forget to mention this is the self-propelled snapper. It does have the uh, disc drive on it that likes to fail. So that's kind of neat. Want to make sure that works.
Ow, that's my hand. All right, we're all back together, except for the air filter, which I'm going to leave off for right now. Put some fresh fuel in the tank. We're going to uh, give her a little snort of the carb cleaner down there and uh, see if she won't bark off for us. Here we go. It goes nothing. Didn't run too awful bad, did she? She fired right up, ran decent. Might try to do a little bit of tuning on that carb though. Let me grab a screwdriver and we'll fire it back up. But that's pretty cool. She uh, fired right up. I don't remember how many poles that was, but she fired right up. So Anyway, we're burning, burning stuff out of the muffler. I don't know if she's really an oil burner yet or not. Time will tell. Pop her back off. Well, you got to put the air cleaner back on these to adjust them right, don't you? I forgot about that. So let's slap that back on it and we'll tune it.
Alrighty. Hmm. Okay. What's going on there, guy? Should have licked right off. Huh. Wonder if maybe this air filter is plugged a little bit. I think I probably got one. I could slap in it if I need to. Let's see if it fires off when I take it off of here. There we go. Try it again. That's what it was. in her. I'm wondering if this thing doesn't have the wrong blade on it. I don't know. We're going to have to take her outside though to try any of this self-propel stuff because it's real well drive. Can't just lift the front up. But I think that's where we're going to go next. We're going to go outside and see what we can't do with that. So as soon as I got that air filter back on there with it running, it seemed like it tuned out pretty good. I guess we ought to try starting it again with the air filter on now. After adjusting the Air fuel mixture. Seeing if it'll fire up now. Much better. First pull. All right, guys. I'll see you outside. All right, guys. Thanks for meeting me out here. We got the snapper out here. You're out here, and I'm out here. But we don't have much in the way of grass right now. I kind of mowed earlier today. It's a little bit over there. I got trimmed, but. Anyway, I really am more concerned with seeing if the uh, self propel is going to work on this thing. So let's fire it up and see what happens.
have it, guys. We uh, got this old snapper high back for 20 bucks off the of marketplace, and I mean, it sat out in the shed out there for a while and sat for God knows how long before that. And uh, we got her fired up, running, mowing, self propel even works with the comb clutches, bags on it, everything. Man, that's nice too. That's like a dream. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. I mean, it'd be cool to keep it and paint it up, but I just, money's tight right now. I got a lot of things going on in my life. I don't think that's probably going to happen. It'd be nice if it did, but we'll just have to see what happens. Um, I don't have anywhere good to work on things, you know. That building's got to be tore down. I mean, I can work outside when it's nice, but that's not much good for painting things and keeping them nice and stuff like that. Plus, Beaches are about ripe. I'm going to have to pick them here pretty soon before the birds eat them all. And the bugs. We've got chicken stuff going on. And wife stuff, kid stuff, family stuff. I'm sure all of you do too. You know how it is. Um, but anyways, I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the channel. I hope you have a great day. God bless you.